from KSAT 12. Concerns about another possible surge. Right now. Concerns about another possible surge in COVID-19 has cases, has Metro Health officials ramping up vaccine efforts. Details on what else you can do to protect your family this holiday season. Thanks to a new partnership, more STEM education is being provided to students in the east side. Coming up, how it's impacting students at MLK Academy. Good morning. We are back this week at Carvajal Elementary School for another edition, the second edition, of KD Science Lab on the road. David is here. We've got some excited fifth graders. We're making more volcanoes later this morning on GMSA at 9. We'll see you soon. We were recently informed of a satellite breakup and need to have you guys start reviewing the safe haven procedure. Yeah, this was big drama over the weekend and into yesterday. Tons of space debris orbiting Earth that was threatening the crew on board the International Space Station. Russia being blamed. We'll have a live interview with a Harvard Afro astrophysicist coming up. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, November 17th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Happy Wednesday. Hope you're enjoying the 67 temperatures so far because things will change later on. We'll talk about that in a minute. There's something fishy going on here in the San Antonio <laughs> area, and it's a good thing. I don't know if you remember my fishing series that ran most of the summer. One of the stories I did was about the redfish, mm -hmm. the red drum that are in two freshwater lakes right here in the San Antonio area. One of them is Calaveras, the other is Bronig Lake, and they're just down the road from San Antonio. That's right, and now one million red drum fish will be stocked in those two Bear County lakes. It's already happened this week. Texas Parks and Wildlife with the Inland Fisheries to San Antonio District posted about the fish stocking on Facebook Monday. And so, like uh, Mark was saying, Calaveras Lake and Bronig Lake are stocked annually with about one million fingerlings, which will eventually grow into 20 to 30 inch and sometimes 40 inch fish. If you can see there on your screen, there's a pretty big catch right there. Officials say the stockings are necessary because the drum don't reproduce in freshwater environments. And so assistant district biologist right there uh, told KSET that roughly 650,000 fish were stocked in Calaveras Lake and 350,000 were stocked in Bronick Lake. So why so much more in Calaveras? Well, they said simply put, Calaveras is bigger. Yeah. And also, they mentioned some new regulations for catfishing down there at Bronig and Calaveras. And I didn't know this till we po posted this article on KSAT.com. They said previously anglers, anglers on those lakes were able to keep 25 catfish with a 12 inch minimum. Now anglers are allowed to keep only 15 with a 14 inch minimum length. That regulation, a special exception to the standard statewide regs when it comes to fishing for catfish. That's right. And then Mark was pointing out to me, uh, officials said the stockings are necessary because the red drum don't do not reproduce in freshwater environments. I did not I did not know that until Mark pointed that out. I don't think I knew that till our story aired several months ago. But now we can enjoy fishing. <laughs> Let's look at today's nine at nine. Today is day two of jury deliberations in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. The teenager charged with killing two people during protests in Wisconsin last year. Tensions are building outside the courthouse in anticipation of a verdict. Rittenhouse faces life in prison if he's convicted on the most serious charge of intentional homicide. In Washington state, hundreds of people are displaced from their homes this morning and tens of thousands are still without power after severe weather swept across the region. 14 counties are under a state of emergency. Officials say 75% of homes in the town of Sumas are damaged by floodwaters. Pfizer asking the FDA for emergency use authorization for its experimental antiviral pill to treat COVID-19. The new pill called Paxlovid showed an 89% reduction in the risk of hospitalization or death in patients with mild to moderate COVID-19. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warning the U.S. government to control spending as they near the already extended debt ceiling. Yellen says the limit could be reached by the middle of next month. It's not clear how Democrats who control Congress will move forward after Republican leaders have said they will not help raise the limit. Justice Department asking for the longest sentence yet for a Capitol rioter, Jacob Chansley. Prosecutors want him to serve four years in prison, followed by three years of supervised release. His photos went viral after the attack, showing him in a furry headdress, face paint, and yelling into a bullhorn. Chansley, who's been in jail for nearly 10 months, is set to be sentenced next week. 
Anyone who used TikTok before September of this year could be entitled to money from a class action lawsuit. TikTok disclosed details about a $92 million federal suit claiming the app illegally collected and used personal data from its users. People who think they are impacted on file claims on TikTok data, privacysettlement.com. Positive sign for the backlog of cargo ships in America's ports. The Port of Los Angeles are reporting a nearly 30% drop in the amount of cargo sitting unloaded. Big box stores like Walmart insist they are prepared for the holidays despite the nationwide shipping issues. Singer Harry Styles, known for his gender fluid wardrobe and love of nail polish, has launched his own gender neutral beauty brand called Pleasing. The brand includes four nail polishes, a dual rollerball lip and eye serum, and a facial serum. Prices range from $20 to $75. New Year's Eve party is back on this year in New York's Times Square. Thousands of people will be welcomed back for the midnight ball drop. Last year's event was held virtually due to COVID-19. Vaccine cards and photo ID are required to attend. And that's today's nine. As we go outside with live cam, don't forget if you're fishing any public water body, you must have a valid fishing license if you're 17 or older. Well, let's bring in Justin, talk more about our midweek forecast. All right, guys, you ready to jump on board the annual fall roller coaster ride that uh, is our weather here in South Texas this time of year. We've got a couple of fronts to talk about. It's going to have some big impacts on our forecast going forward. In the meantime, still warm and humid. 68 degrees at the airport right now, 63 Uvalde, 61 in Rock Springs, and 64 in New Braunfels. We have had some fog this morning, but not much. Warm and humid today, and then look at the temperature tomorrow. We drop about 20 degrees. So tomorrow morning, be prepared to grab the coat wear long sleeves. It'll be a very different day. Windy and cooler 63 on your Thursday, 67 Friday. Weekends look pretty good at this point. Uh, let's look at uh, the satellite picture. You can see where all the clouds are it's still to the north and west of San Antonio, but they're a lot thinner than they were yesterday. So these will go away pretty quickly. And so will the fog. 66 in Castroville, still some fog there. 64 in New Braunfels, 61 in Las Maples. And looking at the visibility, it's down to a, a mile and a quarter, although that's improvement there in Castroville, and I think you'll continue to see that number rise. That's about the only area that's seen fog at this hour. Pollen count, molds are moderate, 690 pigweed and grass are low. Forecast for today, again, up around 82 degrees. Winds will be a little bit breezy, but not as strong as they're going to be tomorrow. We're talking gusts up to 40 miles per hour, guys, tomorrow with that north wind. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out at TransGuy, there's Loop 410 at San Pedro Avenue. Looks like there are a lot of vehicles on the roadways, but I think that's a normal jam point at this point. Right now, we're waiting to learn the name of a man killed during an early morning crash. It happened on the city's northwest side, and this was a scene just before 5 a.m. near the intersection of Hebner Road and Research Drive. San Antonio police say the driver of a car was on Hebner, headed towards Interstate 10, when that vehicle hit a man walking into the street. We are told the driver pulled over to help, but the victim died at the scene. Police say no charges are being filed at this time. And with Thanksgiving around the corner, Metro Health is concerned about another possible surge in COVID cases. That's why doctors are saying the best way to protect you and your family this holiday season is to get vaccinated. If everyone at your celebration isn't fully protected, they recommend Thanksgiving outside with masks on. Currently, Metro Health's COVID risk uh, factor is at the low category. Hospital trends, average case count positivity rate all still listed as low. Hey, Bernie is getting another big health healthcare facility. The Baptist Health System will build a hospital there because so many people are moving in that area. Baptist says the new facility could offer emergency care, but it would mostly stick to less severe injuries and limited hospital stays. Anyone who needs to stay longer would go to other hospitals like those in San Antonio. It will offer an opportunity for physicians who live in Bernie to work in their own community. It is set to open in late 2023 or early 2024. 907 right now. A new partnership with SAISD bringing STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math curriculum to students on the east side. District is partnering with Velocity Texas to provide more education on STEM to students. Tiffany Wetas joins us live from MLK Academy with more. And Tiffany, what are the benefits of bringing more STEM education to students on the city's east side? 
Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. There's a lot of different benefits, but these learning opportunities will connect the students to the different careers in the STEM industry, and that is huge here in San Antonio. So joining us to talk more about this is Principal Natasha Pinnix and Jessica Harris with Velocity Texas. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Can you talk to us a little bit about this new partnership and what is it all about? Sure. The Texas Research and Technology Foundation has a vision to build an innovation district in the near east side, uh, near downtown of San Antonio. So we want to prepare students to fill the jobs that we create for this district. Um, our subsidiary, Velocity Texas, uh, partnered with communities and schools uh, because of their expertise in the school system. And together, we're providing the mentoring uh, for these students' learning opportunities. What type of career opportunities can kids expect once they learn the STEM curriculum? STEM careers are very broad, but specifically in the biosciences and the jobs that we're creating, um, anywhere from a laboratory technician to a researcher to an engineer are all opportunities for kids. And Velocity Texas, can you talk to us, what do you all do? Velocity Texas is an innovation center, so they bring um, incubator and accelerator programs to startup companies in early stages uh, so that they can grow. Um, their companies. <laughs> Great. And Natasha, talk to us about the importance of bringing this curriculum here to the students in the East Side. I am ab absolutely excited about the partnership. This will give our students an opportunity to be aware of different things that they can pursue as careers um, right here in our own backyard. Um, and not only will um, give our students the information, but also their families. How are students reacting to this news of bringing more STEM education here? Um, they're receiving it well. Yesterday they were able to do some 3D animation and cell activities under a microscope and they loved every moment of it. So the exposure definitely is going to increase the entrance of interest in students in the careers. There's also going to be a family night all involving STEM so the family in this community can learn a little bit more? Absolutely. Tonight we'll have a family night from 5 to 7 for our 5th through 8th grade families. Um, there are eight different stations that they'll be able to visit together from coding to creating a robotic hand, and the families will learn together and to, um, increase exposure as a group. How are you feeling about this partnership and the opportunities these students are going to be able to have here? I'm excited. As a, as a fifth grader or an eighth grader, I would not have had this opportunity, so I'm excited about our students to be able to have this exposure and to work with, the with people in our own community um, and open up some doors for them. And it's all about growing this industry and growing the, the pipeline of talent here in San Antonio, right? Exactly. Thank you so much for joining us. Mark, Stephanie, back to you in the studio. Thank you, Tiffany. Time right now, 910, about 68 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. So what would happen if a giant piece of space debris slammed into the International Space Station? Well, it is possible thanks to a reckless act by Russia. More details coming up in a live interview with a Harvard astrophysicist. And imagine paying over $6 million for a house only for it to go up in flames. The story next in your morning headlines. Plus, we're going to be checking in with Katie and David, who are live for another Katie's Science Lab. But look at what they're making today coming up. Welcome back. In your morning headlines, Pfizer playing the waiting game with the FDA. And a deer finds himself in the wrong place at the right time. Plus, millions of dollars turn into ash for one home buyer. And talk about being in the right place at the right time. We'll explain those stories in just a bit. But first, we're keeping an eye on two big announcements that could come before the end of this week. Pfizer has applied for emergency use authorization for its booster for all adults. The FDA's decision to not rely on a panel to make the decision means authorization could come at any moment. The second issue at hand is, has to do with Pfizer's experimental rather, antiviral pill called Paxlovid. We mentioned it in the 9 at 9. The company has applied to the FDA for emergency use. A source says the White House is finalizing a contract to purchase 10 million doses of the drug with an official announcement expected as soon as this week. And taking you to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Now this is a security camera footage from Our Lady of the Lake Hospital. A deer barges through the front door, losing its footing as it runs in, leaving everyone in its path in shock. The doe would end up near the escalators, deciding to take the escalator going down to go up. And Judy Maddox, a nurse at Our Lady of the Lake, quickly jumped into action. 
I ran up the escalator and got up to the second floor about the same time he did. He jumped up against the wall next to the elevators and then turned around and I had gotten to him and was trying to reassure him. Maddox and others at the hospital stayed with the doe, calm her until ages with the State Department of Wildlife and Fisheries could get there. They were able to sedate the deer and carry her out on the hospital bed. It turns out the deer was injured before it came into that hospital. It had been hit by a car. Mm. She was euthanized not long after being captured. No patients or hospital staff were hurt in that incident. And again, that was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Now to Pennsylvania, where a $6.4 million mansion caught fire just a day after it was sold. This house reportedly the most expensive in that area of the state. A neighbor says everyone who lives there knows about the house. Well, this house has been the talk of the area because it's been so intriguing, just the structure of it. And I guess what is inside of the home, especially the ballroom, I understand there's a doll collection. Neighbors say hours after being sold, there was a party at the house. They report seeing buses of people going in and out. Police said the fire started in a ballroom area of the 36,000 square foot mansion. A couple of firefighters were hurt trying to put out the flames. The fire marshal's office is still trying to answer the million dollar question. How did this happen? And now we move, or, move over to Maryland where a routine water rescue turned into the real thing. Volunteer firemen had been practicing nearby when an elderly man drove his car into the river and Whoa. started sinking. So a TV crew on site for the exercise caught everything on video. A rescue diver was able to smash the window and get the driver out of the car before it went completely under, saving his life. He was... I mean, his eyes were wide. As soon as I got in the water and I'm looking at him through his door window, he was just in a state of shock and unbelief that this had happened. Everything added up. Everything worked out well. It's just like we train, and in real life, we made it happen. Volunteer firemen say if they hadn't been in the right place at the right time with the right equipment, this would have been a tragedy. The elderly driver is expected to make a full recovery. Crazy. Crazy situation. That man is very, very lucky. Yes. Justin's back. We're talking about midweek forecast. And uh, by the way, the beard is coming in very nicely yeah. here on this November 17th. And you're doing very well on the fundraising as well for Thank No you, Shave sir. November. I appreciate that. Not as well as you. Uh, by the way, your beard looks awesome, too. Thanks. But uh, so proud of how much we've raised yeah. so far. It's been great. It's a great cause. And yes, we're going to continue. Well, we got a couple more weeks mm -hmm. to, to raise some more money. So thank you to all who have donated so far. Let's take a look at the time lapse, guys. We had some fog out there this morning. It, uh, it was reducing the visibility a little bit here in San Antonio, but not much. Really, the fog was out to the west. And now things have just completely cleared out, and it's pretty nice. 68 right now. Dew point is at 63, and we've got a southerly wind at about 6 miles per hour. If there is any fog left over, it's right around Castroville. That's where we're seeing visibilities down just a hair, one and a quarter mile there. Otherwise, everyone else is doing great. Satellite picture shows those clouds really have thinned out. So this was a quicker process than what we were looking at yesterday. With a lot of sun today, we should get those temperatures into the 80s. It's going to be a warm, humid day. Of course, that changes very abruptly overnight tonight into tomorrow. 69 Pleasant, 1066 in Castroville, 63 in New Valley. Still a little cloudy there. Same story in Del Rio, where it's 66, 70 already in Catula underneath. Clear skies there. Wind gusts, we're seeing a few 22 miles per hour in Rock Springs, gusting to 18 in Fredericksburg. And yes, it will be a breezy day. We'll see some winds up around uh, maybe 15, 20 miles per hour with some gusts. Then our front comes through, and look at these winds tomorrow. Gusts to 33, maybe 37. I think we could see a few gusts to 40 miles per hour. So if you do have Thanksgiving decorations or if you're already one of those folks that have put Christmas decorations out, make sure it's tied down. These things will blow away with winds like that. Current temperatures around the state, we've got 60s and 70s, but look at the Panhandle, 44 Amarillo, 53 Lubbock. That's the influence of that front. This is the front that I'll be working through a little bit later tonight. And there's even colder air north of that. You'll find teens from Casper up to Cut Bank, 29 Bismarck, 31 International Falls. So there is some chillier air that's pushing through the country. Now, our numbers will not be this cold, but it will get colder, especially by Friday morning. We're talking about lows in the mid-40s here around San Antonio. We've talked about the temperatures. Now let's talk about the rain. Could we see any showers with this front? The answer is yes, but we're not going to get much rain. Uh, it's a small window. I think midnight to about 2, 3 a.m. There could be some showers by 6, 7 a.m. the morning commute. 
this will all have pushed south. But the clouds stick around, and it's going to be a mostly cloudy day on your Thursday, which will keep temperatures pretty cool. Rest of today, we make it up to about 82. We fall into the 60s tonight. There's that 20% chance of rain starting to kick in overnight with the front. And then we start off at 53 tomorrow. Not that bad, but we'll have a good northerly wind. And temperatures only make it up to about 63 by tomorrow afternoon with mostly cloudy skies. Then notice the temperature Friday morning, 44. 67 on Friday, 74 Saturday, 79 Sunday. It warms right back up. Then we get another front Sunday night into Monday. Another small window for rain. And then breezy and cooler yet again Monday and Tuesday. And we've had a lot of questions about Thanksgiving. If we're looking at the models down the line, guys. Looks like there could be some rain around. And we talked about yesterday it was trendy warmer. Eh, the models are kind of showing maybe some cooler air trying to work in. Hmm. We're going to nail down that forecast for you. I promise as we get a little bit closer. We look forward to it. Thank you, Justin. After the break, we're checking with Katie Blake and David Sears. That's for their science lab on the road. There's a look right there. We'll see them soon. Welcome back. Just about 925. Last week, Katie and David, David took over the fifth grade science class over at Carvajal Elementary to make volcanoes. And they're back again this morning with a new group of kiddos. Good morning, guys. Good morning, everybody. I uh, hope you're having a great morning so far. We are super excited to be back at Carvajal Elementary this morning. We're with another class of fifth graders, Miss Shinbear's fifth grade class. They saw all the fun we had last week and they wanted to get in on this as well. So they are hard at work putting their volcanoes together. We're going to make some volcanoes erupt again this morning. These students specifically over the past few weeks have been learning all about different kinds of earth processes. They've been learning about the different things that happen on the surface of the earth, also below the surface of the earth. That's important for today's activity because we've got that magma bubbling under the surface that we're going to have erupt here later on in the newscast. How are you guys? Good? I told them I can tell if they're smiling under these masks. I can tell, so you all better smile real big. So they are working in pairs this morning partner work here getting these volcanoes ready to go we've already got our baking soda in our soda bottles they have been working with the clay molding the shape of their volcanoes over the past few minutes and then uh, after this check-in we'll start to get closer and closer to the point of eruption yeah I scared them a little bit I think <laughs> So uh, we are very excited to be here. Uh, the, a big important part of getting out of the KSAT studio, it's great to be with you guys there, but uh, we really wanted to um, get out into some of our area classrooms, interact with our area students, and, um, and, and really bring the learning to them and, and have some fun as well. And we're so thankful that we were able to come out to Carvajal Elementary School. I'm going to help these kiddos finish up their volcanoes. David is going to speak with our teacher extraordinaire here. <laughs> so there, uh, first off, the creativity on these volcanoes is absolutely incredible. Um, talk to me a little bit about the importance of this, of being hands-on for especially science projects like this today. Hey, so our fifth grade, we really need to connect to what we're learning, right? We need to have that, that personal connection to what we're seeing, researching, reading, watching on videos, and they get that opportunity in activities like this where they can create something, they can model something, they can see what they've learned at work. And we're going to get that in two, two ways today, right? We're going to do that in the model of the volcano. We're talking about earth processes and what happens. And we've had some previous experience in our classroom learning with uh, chemical reactions, and they're going to get to see that too. So they can kind of bring it all together in an activity like this, and it really sticks with them. Well, we appreciate you letting us come in and do this. We had a great time last week. Everything went pretty well. We uh, we created some volcanoes and some messes. So just, uh, did, hey, did you bring them up? We've got, we've got it all covered. No worries here. <laughs> last week we needed a mop over there. <laughs> so I, just, I didn't want anybody at home to know that we needed a mop last week. So. It's so time for somebody to bring donuts or cookies to the custodian staff at Carver Hall Elementary. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, we, you're, you're right. So we might have to do that too as okay. well. So but we're going to be back in a few minutes and we are going to, as Katie said, have it. What are we going to have? Eruption. Eruption. One more time. What are we going to have? Eruption. That's what we're going to do in a second. Back to you guys. <laughs>
<laughs> we look forward to it. Thank David, you, David. Katie, thank you guys. Live at Carver Hall Elementary's Katie Science Lab continues to be on the road. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. So have you been following Roadrunner football? UTSA is having a phenomenal season. And if they'll make history, will depend on another win this weekend. We're going to have a preview. First, we have a Harvard astrophysicist on standby to answer some questions about that Russian space debris orbiting our planet right now and apparently put the ISS crew, including a couple of Russian cosmonauts, at risk earlier this week. We'll be right back. The most immediate concern is the debris itself, uh, which is now um, f floating out there and could become a hazard, including to the International Space Station. If you missed it earlier this week, that was big, big news. U.S. State Department says our 1,500 pieces of debris are orbiting Earth after Russia recklessly crashed a missile into one of their own satellites earlier this week. The lives aboard the International Space Station were at risk, including the four American astronauts on board. For more of an explanation on what exactly happened here, we bring in an astrophysicist at the Harvard Smithsonian Center, Dr. Jonathan McDowell. Good morning. Good morning. Well, first of all, can you briefly explain what happened here? Right. So the Russians are testing out their new noodle anti-satellite system. They used to have anti-satellite weapons, but they've all been retired for ages. So this is a new system. They've done test launches of the rocket before, but this is the first time they'd actually fired it against an old target satellite, a 1980s Soviet spy sat that they blew into thousands of pieces, uh, all of which are whizzing around the Earth at 17,000 miles an hour. Uh, and uh, the International Space Station and other satellites are uh, orbiting through this, this uh, risk area. Uh, and in the immediate hours after the test, the, the debris was all still rather close together, and the ISS was passing a bit too close for comfort to that area. And so the astronauts had to take a lot of precautions, closing hatches in case one of the compartments get, got hold. They've now, I've been told today, allowed to open the hatches again. The debris is sort of spreading out around the Earth. And so it's going to become just like a 10 or 20 percent increase in the overall amount of space junk that uh, that causes risk to them rather than a, an immediate localized threat. Right. Dr. McDowell, this sounds like a bit of a game changer. How does this threaten the future of space exploration, not only for us here in the U.S., but for the rest of the world? Well, you know, we're in an era where the number of satellites is increasing really fast. Uh, a few years ago, there were only a thousand working satellites. Now there are almost 5,000. Uh, and so space is getting a lot more crowded. And so adding extra unnecessary space junk uh, when we've already got way too much space junk uh, is, is, um, is really irresponsible, I think. And it's going to mean satellites have to spend more of their time dodging. Uh, Another thing is that when you have a, a, an, an explosion like this, it takes the Space Force months, uh, even years, to catalog it all. And so it's one thing to know the junk is there and be able to dodge it. But when you don't know the junk is there, you can easily get hit. And, and so I'm really worried that we could lose some very expensive satellites uh, or even have the space station uh, spring a leak uh, because of this debris event. Speaking of the space station and the worst case scenario, what would happen if a piece of debris did hit the International Space Station? Well, you know, it depends how big the debris is, right? If it's a really big piece of debris, it could shatter one of the modules like you're seeing on the animation, I guess, probably from gravity or something, right? Uh, uh, that would be that would be terrible. But even a smaller piece of debris uh, traveling at 17,000 miles an hour makes a bullet hole. And so, uh, you know, the, the first thing you know then is that your ears pop and you hear a hissing sound. And this is really not a good thing to hear if you're an astronaut on the space station. And so you'd have to find the leak, plug it, or else they could, uh, uh, or else the crew could asphyxiate. So, so in general, having holes in your space station is, is really not something that you want. Dr. Medell, one final question. Will this debris ever go away? And can you envision an organized effort to maybe get rid, rid of some of this uh, space junk? Right. Well, the good news, such as it is, is that this lower part of outer space <clears throat> still has a little bit of atmosphere there. It's self-cleaning. Uh, the debris will feel friction from the atmosphere, and in five to ten years, it will get cleaned out. It's still that's still a long time, uh, but earlier debris tests, like one that the U.S. did in the 1980s, 
at that altitude, all that debris is now down. Uh, for I do think for the larger pieces of space junk, like leftover rocket stages, we do need to go and, and have the fleet of space garbage trucks that will get rid of them because it's just getting insane up there with the amount of, uh, of, of garbage we've left in space. All right, Dr. McDowell, thank you for joining us this morning. Pleasure. Have a good rest of the week. Fascinating stuff. Let's go back here on Earth outside with live cam in good old San Antonio, Texas. Another beautiful day out there after some more morning clouds and fog waiting on our next front, Mr. Horn. We are. And how fascinating. Space garbage trucks. It's yeah. Mind blowing. <laughs> I was Think about. laughing about space <laughs> junk. I haven't heard that. That's uh, that's where we are these days. Uh, I want to take you out to Lost Maples, guys. Uh, it has been pretty beautiful out there this year. You know, it's been booked up. All the weekends are certainly booked up, but this is a scene Veronica sent this in and she says, even though Lost Maples trails have leaves mostly on the ground, it's still a beautiful, relaxing hike or walk. It certainly is. It looks like we sort of hit the peak here. We may be on the back side of things, but always a beautiful sight out there at Lost Maples this time of year. Veronica, we appreciate the picture. 68 degrees at the airport, 67 right off 64 in New Braunfels. A lot of sun here in San Antonio. Still are some clouds hanging on out towards Uvalde and Las Maples, but those clouds will quickly go away. So our forecast calls for a high of 82 today, 74 by 6 o'clock, southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. But as Mark alluded to, this all changes tomorrow. So yes, we're up to 82 today. The high tomorrow, 63. We'll have uh, mostly cloudy skies. Not only that, it'll be windy. We're going to get some gusts, I think, up to about 40 miles per hour out of the north. So be prepared for those big changes tomorrow as you head off to work and school. We'll keep you updated, of course, guys. We'll be prepared. Thank you, Justin. Another look there at Loop 410 at San Pedro Avenue. Things seem to be moving right now. I love this part. I get to play sports guy. Our young Spurs continue to struggle. Silver and Black dropped another game late last night, this time in the road at the hand of the L.A. Clippers. DeJounte Murray coming off a triple-double Sunday night, Staples Center against the Lakers. First shot of the game for the Spurs. Derek White knocks back the three, gets the Spurs off on the right foot. Murray, meanwhile, nearly missed his second triple-double, leading the Spurs with 26 points, 12 rebounds, and 9 assists. Still not enough, though. Spurs couldn't close the deal, losing to the Clippers 106 to 92. Ouch. Derek White added 19. Drew Eubanks had 10 rebounds in the Spurs third straight loss. Spurs now dropped to two and six on the road. Up next, Spurs visit Minnesota tomorrow to finish a three game road trip. And the road trip continues for the Spurs. Next, they'll take on the Timberwolves. That game is tomorrow night at 730. Just so we're clear on who they're playing next. On the uh, gridiron for the undefeated UTSA Roadrunners, all comes down to one game this Saturday when the team hosts University of Alabama at Birmingham. If the 10-0 Roadrunners win, they'll take the Conference USA West Division title for the first time in school history. UTSA would then host the Conference USA Championship in the Alamo Dome. Should UAB win, they would have the inside track in the title but still must win out against UTEP the following week. Since UAB returned to playing football in 2017, the Roadrunners have never beaten the Blazers. Let's hope that changes this weekend. To kick off set for Saturday afternoon, turf 2.30 at the Alamo Dome. Good luck to the Roadrunners. Yes, good luck. Very exciting. Time now, 940 and about 68 degrees out there. So you're watching GMSA at 9, and we're going to have another live look inside Carvajal Elementary with Katie and David. They're almost ready for their live science experiment with a class of fifth graders. That's coming up after the break. And welcome back. It's about 944 now. It's experiment time. Katie and David are live in a fifth grade class at Carvajal Elementary. Guys, is everything ready for your encore performance? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. We are ready. Miss Shinver's class is ready. Yes? Yeah. So, in case you missed it, we are back at Carvajal Elementary School with another class of fifth graders. They've been learning about earth processes, what happens on the surface of the earth, below the surface of the earth. So, here's our earth surface here. Uh, we are talking all about magma today. And I asked some of the kiddos if they knew the difference between magma and lava. Sometimes I feel like they, they're used interchangeably. So, magma is inside 
the volcano and below the Earth's surface. After it erupts, then it is lava. And we are all about the eruption today. Also, this thing is really cool. So, y'all ready? So here is where we're at. We've got our volcano ready to go. We've got the baking soda in the bottle. We have molded our volcano. We put a few drops of food coloring inside. All that's left to do now, you guys, is to add the vinegar. And we actually get a little bit of a double whammy here because we're talking about these things that happen below the surface of the earth with the magma being pushed up by the pressure. It erupts and that's the lava and that creates new kind of rock on top of the surface of the earth. But these kiddos also know a lot about chemical reactions, including acids and bases and what happens when an acid meets a base. That's also happening here. So our base is our baking soda, our vinegar is our acid. When they meet up, they wanna neutralize each other and that's the reaction that we're gonna have, that's our eruption. So David's gonna show us how it's gonna work and then we're gonna go around to everybody's table and do our own eruption. You ready? Yeah. What are we about to have? Eruption! (laughs) That's the word of the day. Here we go. Here we go. Do do more, do more, do more, do more, more. Just a little eruption. No, more, 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 more. It's warming up. It's warming up. Now we go. There we go. Wow. That's what's going to happen. I like this too because it shows the liquid, shows how it kind of starts to erode the sand a little Uh bit. It changes the makeup of it. So now. We're going to go around to everybody's table. We're going to take some vinegar and get these eruptions Here. going. Go Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Y'all ready? No, no, no. Okay, All right. Go. These gentlemen worked really hard on this you volcano. Are you ready to move the funnel? All right. And what it, so what is, what do we have in beneath the, vol, the volcano? What's it called? Magma. And then when it erupts, what is it? Ready? Here comes. Lava. All right. Here comes your lava. Whoa. Woo. We can do it. Here, put it back in there. We can do a little bit more. There you go. A little more pressure behind that one. A little bit more height. All right, gentlemen. Be very fast. Good job. It doesn't disappoint, does it? No. Very good job. Very good job. I'll come back. All right, you guys. <laughs> good job. Hold the funnel. Hold the funnel. Big eruption coming. So you guys slide around here so you can see it. We're gonna put it on TV. You guys come around here real quick so you can see what happens. I'll get back over there. Okay, here we go. It'll be okay. Okay, hold the funnel. Hold the funnel. Ready? Here it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Go get it. <laughs> so now we get to actually see the reaction. Yeah. See? What, that? what does that look like? Cut away the bottle there. That's a good idea, David. Nice. Is that pretty cool? Satisfying. Yeah. That was pretty cool. What do you think about that reaction? Cool. Cool. <laughs> cool. So, did that one kid say it was satisfying? Yes. Is that what he, he said? <laughs> nice. It kind of is. Yeah, it's satisfying. <laughs> we got some more over here. Got some more, David. So. One more thing I wanted to mention yes, real ma'am. quickly yeah. is that we worked with the with the teachers here at Carver Hall and, and chatted with them about Whoa. what they were actively studying and we tried to tie in an activity so I, I think that's what makes this really beneficial as well. We want to keep taking KD Science Lab on the road. I know we're running into the holidays and very, very busy season, but uh, if you are a teacher or you know a teacher and you would like us to come visit your school, email me. There's info about that online. We're almost done here. What's up? Okay, I just wanted to talk to you because you were telling me earlier about this reaction. So what kind of chemical reaction did we, did we just witness? You did it? Oh. All right, cool. Um, we'll come back around. So the, the baking soda has sodium, so when you pour the you v- vinegar, it has a chemical it. reaction. And it just kind of erupted. Yes. Okay, see? So Mark and Steph, <laughs> smarter than a fifth grader? Impressive. Yeah, it's very impressive. impressive. <laughs> Katie, David, and all those fifth graders there in the science class at Carvajal Elementary. Thank you, guys. I see you, Katie. Katie, I wonder, I wonder if Katie Blake was an elementary school teacher in a past life. Um, possibly. She seemed like a natural possibly. up there on the uh, on the on the electronic yes. whiteboard. And and a dancer as well. <laughs> yeah, I liked how some of the kids were holding onto the funnel like like with confidence, and some of them were like yeah. like this. Oh, what's gonna happen? That's right. Good times. Good. 
it for more on that on ksat.com for all of Katie's science experiments with uh, her assistant, Mr. David Sears. That's right. And for now, we check in with Justin. Did you enjoy those experiments? Uh, it's been incredible. And I hope I hope some teachers go and sign up because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I know Katie's got some more experience. Uh, experiments up her sleeve that will yes throw so some let's, science let's start there. lining them up for 2022 yes let's do it uh, let's go outside too we'll show you what's uh, going on out there we've got blue skies here in san antonio and temperatures right now 68 degrees very comfortable 68 degrees with a southerly breeze at six miles per hour i say comfortable the dew point is up a little bit so it is somewhat humid we experienced that yesterday we'll see some more of that today but it's gone by tonight with our front that's coming through 66 Rio Medina 67 Bandera 66 in Kerrville here at 64 in New Braunfels and looking at 70s from Pleasanton to Kennedy up to Gonzales and down to Victoria well close to 70 there in Gonzales dew points as I mentioned very much in the muggy territory that the moisture continues to sort of just stay in place. It's why we've seen the fog and the clouds last couple mornings and it's because we do have that good southerly wind Right now, it's anywhere from 5 to 15 miles per hour. These winds will pick up a little bit today. It'll be somewhat breezy, but not overly windy. We'll get you the windy weather tomorrow. In fact, it gets really windy by tomorrow afternoon. Look at this forecast. So this is 1 o'clock today. We've got some gusts up to maybe 15, 20 miles per hour here around San Antonio. No big deal. By this evening, winds even calm a little bit. But right up there, that's the leading edge of the front. Here it comes. Boom, right there. You start to see the winds really pick up. This is around 2 a.m. overnight. We're getting some gusts close to 30, maybe even 40 miles per hour, and it stays windy through the morning time. So when you go off to work and school in the morning, it's going to be, I hate to use the word bl blustery because it's not going to be that cold, but we'll have temperatures in the 50s and these strong northerly winds. So the wind will be howling, and then by midday, we're still getting some gusty winds, although I think winds will calm some by Thursday afternoon. Outside, we notice we've got some clouds out west. Those are quickly dissipating so we'll see a lot of sun today and I want to show you the water vapor real quick gives us an idea of where the spin in the atmosphere is where our low pressure our high pressure is situated and right now we've got a pretty good strong area of low pressure up in Canada and that's what's driving this front south behind it cold air 10 and cut bank 19 Casper 25 Denver that cold air is surging now into Texas and temperature in Amarillo is 44 we're going to feel some of this obviously it's not going to be that cold but we will get some temperatures in the 40s by Friday morning, and it will feel chillier tomorrow with highs only in the 60s. As far as rainfall is concerned, this front moving through about midnight, there will be a couple of showers, but don't expect much. Most of us less than a tenth of an inch. That's it. And then most of that rain is pushing south by tomorrow morning. We still are left, though, with clouds through the day on your Thursday, keeping things mostly cloudy. Forecast for today up around 82 for a high, and then those rain chances kick in after 10 p.m. tonight. Temperatures start off at 53 tomorrow. We only make it up to 63 for high. So that is the big change with this front. 67 Friday, 74 Saturday, 79 on Sunday. We get another front that brings a small chance for rain. Cooler on Monday, 68. And uh, looking down the line, it looks like we could get some rain towards Thanksgiving. We'll keep you updated there. We'll be right back. We had other stuff for you, but we are out of time. We had so much fun with the science lab. We did. Have a great day. Bye, guys.